Hello, my name is Lawrence and we're close to the Martello Tower and we're about to go on a fossil hunt with Phil. Hello, my name is Phil, Phil Eden uh, from Dover, a local fossil enthusiast. So we're at uh, approaching Copt Point in Folkestone where the gaunt clay comes down onto the beach. There's nice exposure there for a few hundred yards and uh, fingers crossed we might find some old ammonites and other bits and pieces lying in the shingle. So Lawrence, while we're walking, how long have you been interested in fossils? Since about when I was in probably the first time I went to school, which was a very, very long time ago. Well, that's all relative. <laughs> Phil's waving his hand around going, no, <laughs> because he went to school, I'm betting, a bit further, yeah. uh, a bit longer away than you did. What is it about it that excites you? The idea that there is, there could be something undiscovered b beneath where you're walking. And that's the mystery behind some of the creatures that lived a long time ago. Phil, what was the first fossil you found? The very first fossil I found was probably a little bit younger than you actually. It was down in Dorset, a place called Kimmeridge, which was uh, an, an ammonite. The sort of thing we find around here, the little mollusks. I've actually brought it with me if you'd like to see it. That was, uh, I think I was about seven or eight years old, I think. My parents took me on a holiday down there, so I found it. There we go. Rather different to the ones that we find in... Look, it's covered in... Yeah. surrounded by slate. It's absolutely right, it is, oh. yes. It's, it's like a shale, really, but yes, you can see the ammonite there. Yeah. Little, this is like a marine, like a oh, bit like could, a they snail, could, really. They could grow to actually really big sizes, couldn't they? Some of them did. They've grown up to over two metres across, like big sort of tractor tyre size. Yeah, that's what Mosasaur fed on from fossil records. Yes, I think you're right. Yeah, they, find, they find lots of these inside Mosasaur's stomach, so you're spot on there. These were incredibly common, these ammonites. They were like little marine snails with the tentacles that came out at the end, a bit like a, an octopus living in a shell. And they were, they were everywhere, millions and millions and millions of years these were in the seas. Very, very common creatures. But uh, the difference between this one and the ones we get around here is the ones around here in Folkestone are preserved in three dimensions. As you can see, this one here from Kimmeridge has been crushed flat. So in fact, the ones from Folkestone are much better. OK, well, this is a little, little shell. This is a little bivalve shell. We still get these today. There were two little parts of a sort of clam that would have had a little hinge joint at the bottom. And this section piece here is a section of an ammonite, which an ammonite was a sort of floating marine snail with a little like, octopus living inside like, or a squid. Let's hold that for a second. It looks like one bit of it, or is it just like... It is. It's like a little part, like, like that, like a little chain. So this one would be fairly big. So if there's yeah. like about, how many of these? 100-ish? Yes. Yep, so a piece of ammonite there, perfect, yeah, that's right. Can I just set the scene here? We are just standing around a little rock, some, and look, Hannah's picked up one, two, three. Lawrence's got three in his hand, I've got one in my hand. Benjamin's picking up stuff, Dave's over there, Alison's over here. Everybody's picking up all of these things, and this really is as easy as it is, is it? Really as easy as that. <laughs> Now you can see that now with the with the ribs. I see. So it's the ribs coming out of this coil that, that is the ammonite, which, right. we, which we know of and we can see. And so That's what right. we've picked up here is one of these um, a section of these of these of the coil going around. And what have you got there, Benjamin? Ooh. Um, a weird something, and also this. I just grabbed a whole bunch yep, of the. Yep, that's another. There's a nickname, Devil's Toenail. What is? That's what they call the little shell, and that I. I have not got a clue. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you've got me there on that one. Sorry. So, what have you got there, Lawrence? You just come back with a bunch of rocks. I wanted to have a look at them. I didn't want to bend down. Have a look for some tiny little brown tubes, about that big. You have to find them. Sometimes they've got a pointed end, like little bullet shapes. And you should find some of those in the in the shingle. What's actually your favourite prehistoric creature? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> There's so many to choose from, really. Most people say they're dinosaurs, but uh, I prefer things that are much older than the dinosaurs, really strange things that lived in the sea, oh. weird animals like uh, trilobites and... Uh, uh, do you know what a trilobite is? Or what? Yes, I do, actually. They're like underwater woodlouse. <laughs> That's right. They go from like, really miniature sizes to very big. Yep, you're absolutely right. And they're around they were for... They eaten by creatures like orphicone and sea scorpions. But interestingly, sea scorpions didn't actually have a sting. 
Croc, you've done your research. <laughs> You're absolutely right, yes. Yes, author cones with giant nautiluses looked rather like this, but uh, we grew up to huge great things. They were, again, three or four metres, some of them were. They used to feed on trilobites. But trilobites were lovely because they were so strange and so ornamented. They had little, Nothing you know, like them are today, really. No really. living relatives. It's only the horseshoe crab, which looks similar, but it's not really the same animal. It just physically resembles an old trilobite, mm. really. But, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, brought, I've brought one here to show you as well. Yeah. It's probably really difficult to get keep try and get fossil records of stuff that was around, like, 4.6 billion years ago-ish. There you go, there's one. Amazing. <laughs> Did you find that? No, I didn't know. It came from a fossil <laughs> shop. <laughs> it comes from Morocco. It's a... No, look at that. Personally, Some of these. Mm. My favourite prehistoric creatures would be the ones that lived around the Cretaceous, because I know a lot about that. Preferably Spinosaurus. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Well, we don't really find things like that here in Folkestone, because I'm sure you know this is all marine deposit, it's all yeah. under the sea. Spinosaurus and the dinosaurs, of course, were obviously living on the land, so we don't tend to find dinosaur One fossils the, here. It was but... actually the largest carnival, carnivorous dinosaur to ever existed. Oh really? Bigger 70, than T-Rex? Yes, a lot, a lot bigger. There are quite a few dinosaurs that are a lot, lot bigger. So Spinosaurus was the largest, eight, 17 metres. For the purposes wow. of the people who don't know so much about fossils as you guys seem to, can I ask a question and say, so what period was that around? What sort of things would we be finding, would we see on the land or in the sea when, when this um, wonderful, what was it again? It was a trilobite. Trilobite yeah. was around, which looks like a, a woodlouse the size of the palm of my hand. Mm. That would be Ordovician, wouldn't it? I believe, yes, I believe it is. <laughs> I think we should swap places, I think. So, <laughs> and, and so what sort of year is that? Because you're coming out with all of these names mm. and all of these words in the Cretaceous period oh, and all was, of that sort of thing. That how was, many m millions of years ago is that this? That wasn't millions, that was billions. Of okay, years ago. so how many no. billion? No, well, how many? This, I mean, this one I think was about 450 million years old. The stuff here is about 100 million, so this is four and a half times older than the fossils in Folkestone. At that time, there were no dinosaurs on the land. There weren't even any insects on the land. It was just it possibly was. some moss and algae and mm, some basic plants, maybe some little things living you know, in, in the, in the, um, on the shore, maybe crawling in and out of the water. But really, it was a very alien landscape back then. That's why I find these things fascinating, going way back, because the world was so strange. Even now, we went back to a dinosaur, dinosaur period, Cretaceous. Things would look quite familiar. We'd have flowers here and plants and trees and some of it would, would be the same believe it or not but so, back then it wouldn't and the Cretaceous period how many millions of years ago is that? one of oh, you, you. Both of you. <laughs> well the Cretaceous period ended with a bang because well, when, when how many millions of years ago is it? well it ended 65 million years ago but not all the dinosaurs probably died out then because it was like a nuclear winter so if it ended 65 million years ago had it how long was it around for was it around for a couple of million years was or was it around for it was a long period of cretaceous the mid, yeah. the mid cretaceous was around 75 million years ago okay so we're talking sort of 10 15 maybe 20 million years the cretaceous period was around or longer no, than that about, it started about 115 million years ago i think it's about right 115 to 65 million it's a very long period the Cretaceous and the stuff here is Cretaceous in Folkestone it's about 100 million so, so that's what you're going to find over yeah. here so I'm just going to record the high-tech sound of fossil hunting here <laughs> and the particular tool you are using is your hand to just sweep <laughs> through that's right <laughs> there you go. What's that? that's beautiful What's that? that's a piece of ammonite that is oh, it's yeah. everywhere do you think there would be a whole like if they were they might all be part of and one ammonite I don't think so, no. I mean, you, it's been, it's been for 100 million years. I think any, any parts would have got broken up and spread all over the place since then. Well, in the action so, of the sea, you've got it coming in and out every day. It's exactly. not really going to stay the same, is it? Oh, there we go. Finally. That's a bellum so, knight. A bellum knight. A bellum knight. That's right. Bellum knight. Now, oh, that's nice. Hang on a sec. Mm. Hang on a sec. Let's do the bellum knight first. So this is... Right, describe now, this to me. A bellum knight was like a squid-like creature with, again, tentacles and a head and a long body with fins at the end. And what you often find is tiny little brown tubes, sometimes like bullet shapes, if they're complete. And these are like the tips of the, the back end of the, of the bellum knight. They're inside the body. These are actually like a counterbalancing rod, so in other words, they were like a heavy weight at the back of the animal to keep it buoyant. 
So you've got like a third of the length. So you've got that's like the tip. Body would have been like about here, and a head with tentacles coming out the end. They're incredibly common creatures, these, but uh, for some reason they all disappeared 65 million years ago, and nobody really knows why. <laughs> Probably the same thing that caused the dinosaurs to disappear. I'm sure it was all connected, totally, yeah. yeah. It's like a negative fossil, that one. That's an imprint. So the fossil, the real animal was here, yeah. and it's like the concretion has built up on it and been broken off. So it's got like yeah. an inverse image of the ammonite. It's like there's metal in it as well. Yeah, imagine if, you, imagine if you had that model of a mammonite and had press, poly, press blue tack into it and took the blue tack out, you'd end up with an, Im, an image, wouldn't you? But backwards, what it was. That's what that one is. Have, have you ever found like a dino, like a proper dinosaur sort of fossil? No, I'm afraid I haven't. I wish. <laughs> no, I've, I haven't found a dinosaur at all. I think so the reason is I mean, most of the local rocks, of course, as I said earlier, were all under the sea. So we don't find dinosaur fossils here because we just don't find them. Having said that, a couple of years ago I was out with a with a couple of people, it's their very first time down to Folkestone looking for fossils and they found a big marine reptile tooth just over there and it was like really amazing, about that big it was like the first chance, the first time they ever come down and there it was, just lying roughly there Roughly, how many millions of years ago would that fossil be dated to? About 100 and 105, 110 million roughly Why is this area so important? This area is so important because it's a, a, it's, it's a very rare outcrop of galt clay that extends where the where it starts turning grey here right around the headland towards the chalk and it's quite it, it, for some reason it preserves it preserves fossils extremely well so it's actually designated a site of scientific interest um, so we say we get them preserved in three dimensions in very good very good quality and it's just a, a rather unusual um, I use geology, yes, yes. But if you think, we've got lower green sand here coming through when it starts, yeah. gold clay up there and the chalk, and so we've got, we're going backwards in time as we come this way towards the coast and more forward as we go towards Dover. Uh -huh. So the chalk's on top of the clay, which is on top of the green sand. So we find earlier stuff at this end of the beach and later stuff up towards, up towards the chalk. If you've got this whole... Um change in, in periods of history that we can see from here going all the way up to Dover. Have there been some really significant finds in this area that have helped sort of um, helped us understand better the whole Cretaceous period? It's not unique Folkestone. There are other areas where the clay does, does surface. I'm not aware of anything that's rewritten the history books with being found out Folkestone but Having said that, what I think is nice about it is, it, it can, if, for the real experts who really know about this stuff, it contains an incredible layer upon layer of ammonites, and they can trace the evolution of one particular family of, of ammonites because they are so well preserved for about, say, 15 million years as it gets, as, as it's, um, as we go forward in time along the coast. So experts can look at these and then work out what, what evolved from what and how they all interrelate to each other. But it's really sort of expert territory level, really that. Okay, here's. A quick question, because uh, you said like the chalk will be yep. later. If they were to excavate, like in Dover, would they find anything in the chalk, really? Oh yes, they do find things in the chalk. Absolutely. Chalk, being a, a lime, tends to dissolve shells, though. That's the problem we've got with the chalk because ammonites don't really tend to get preserved in the chalk unless you get the really, really big ones because their shells still sort of don't break up. But um, we do find a lot of sea urchins in the chalk and other bits and pieces like that. So I've found quite a few sea okay. urchins, sea urchin spines and fragments going off towards St Margaret's Bay and towards Deal direction up there. But ammonites, you tend to get the only the really huge ones if you're really lucky to find them. But they were there in the seas, it's just that they didn't really, haven't really preserved in the chalk. So I'm going to try and make you feel really, really good here. Of all the things that I'm holding in my hand that we've just found in about a few seconds, are there any of these which you're dying to take home because you've never seen them before, or are you all going to say, no, we can have them? <laughs> <laughs> of course you can have them. Help yourself. So that none of this is actually terribly unusual? I'm going to take that one. It, well, it, it, it's all a bit of context, really. It's unusual nationally, because you cannot come to... So few beaches in the country you can come to and just pick up fossils as we're doing here it's so rare but here because they're so common we always take it for granted so if I found one of those on any other beach in the country I'd be going oh wow look I found a fossil here it's like oh next one next one next one you know <laughs> but there's uh, yeah I mean they're, they're a typical representative example of the stuff we get around here there's nothing really unusual just yet but then we've only just started you never know <laughs> that's brilliant well I, I hope that the quest is going to continue we shall do this thanks ever so much for coming it's okay pleasure I wonder what this is that's again a small piece of an ammonite again. <laughs>